Welcome to Children's Time. I'm glad that you're joining us again this week. We're continuing our series using our Lenten material that we've given to each of our church families. If you'd like a copy, simply contact us at the address after the video and we'll be glad to send one to you. Today is starting on page 29. You can follow along in the books that you were given or you can just simply listen in. Today, Jesus is gonna be talking to a young man. We think that he might've been a, a older teenager or maybe a young adult. And he has some questions for Jesus. And we know that he was very wealthy and he had some authority. We don't know his name, but we can learn a lot from how Jesus speaks with him. And we know that Jesus loves him very much. Do you know what it means to be wealthy? Wealthy means to have lots of everything, more than what you need. And you have the ability to buy whatever you want, whenever you want it. Now, is it wrong to be wealthy? No, it's wrong to be selfish and it's hard to be rich and unselfish. And so Jesus is going to challenge him to do an unselfish thing. I'm gonna to read to you from Matthew 19, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Someone came to Jesus and said, teacher, what good deed must I do for eternal life? And he said to him, why do you ask me about what's good? There's only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones, said the teen. Jesus said, you should not murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said, I do all those things. Is there anything else that I need to do? I've been doing those things since I was a little boy. And Jesus said, with great love, there is one thing you lack. Now, what do you think it would be? One thing he lacks. Well, let's see what Jesus said. If you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come back and follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Hmm. That was not the response that Jesus was hoping for but he loved this young man and wanted the best for him. Now, what would be a reason that the young man wouldn't want to give away his possessions? Well, sometimes people feel proud of the things that they own. They can have a fancy car or the best gaming system, or they can be proud that they're super smart. There's a lot of ways that we gain our identity by what we do or what we have, or even who we know. And Jesus was challenging this young man not to use his authority and his uh, wealth for his own good. He wanted the young man to reach out and to sell what he had and to benefit the poor, benefit the others, like love your neighbor as yourself. That was where he was challenging him, not just to memorize the commandments, but to be able to do them. Later on in the material, you have an opportunity to ask some questions of each other. And one of the things that you may want to do is talk to a grandma or a grandpa, maybe somebody who's an older neighbor, and just ask them, what does it mean to be wise? What does it mean to be kind? What good choices did you make when you were younger that helped you when you were older? Oh, I think those kinds of questions lead to some really interesting answers. If you take the time to listen to what they say, you can really learn a lot that will help you avoid hard things in your later life. Now, what does Jesus mean when he said, be perfect? How in the world can we be perfect? That word is kind of hard. Well, back in Jesus' day, when they, when they would use the word perfect, it meant like mature or complete, like when you see an apple growing on a tree, you know that you don't want to eat it when it's first coming. You need to let it completely grow. That's what Jesus is talking about. It's being complete or whole. And adults too need to learn how to be mature, especially in our emotions and in our mind and in our relationship with God and others. The prayer 
for this week is on page 31. Let's pray it now. Dear God, you include us and embrace us, even when we do not feel perfect or whole. There's nothing we can do to cancel your love for us. Inspire us to make wise choices, have generous hearts, and seek invisible treasures. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. I look forward to seeing you next week when we'll continue our materials on God's treasures. God bless you.